Oh, what's going on, guys? Chloe on Noir here. I got a toy. The Adams Arms P3. So Adams Arms sent this out to me to review. This is their top of the line, upper echelon AR-15 setup. Um, it's sitting somewhere about, from what I saw, floating somewhere between 23 to 2,500. And so the initial questions go, oof, why, why? Now, the first thing I picked up on with this rifle that I really loved was the barrel. So for the, if I could, if I could, I would put a carbon fiber proof research barrel in every AR that I ever owned. One, because they're sexy as hell to look at. Two, they're light. Three, they mitigate heat really well. And four, they're sexy as hell. And that was the first thing I noticed when I got this rifle was, there's a proof research carbon fiber barrel in this gun. So I was like, ooh, that is nice. And then I was like, ooh, that's gonna make it pricey. <laughs> um, but there are a load of features on this gun. This is a this is a gun that's the sum of all its parts, uh, by and large. And but the main show about this gun, it isn't even really the barrel. It's the fact that it is a short stroke piston system. And so for those that don't really understand that. I want to take time to thank today's sponsor, Arrowhead Tactical. Now, anybody who's tried to conceal carry in a pair of sweats or joggers knows it's incredibly annoying and frustrating. Either you can't carry the size gun you want to carry because the drawstring can't support the weight, or when you start moving or doing anything active, the gun's bouncing all over the place and you think it's going to fly out of your pants. That's where Arrowhead Tactical comes in. They have the ability to run a belt, which will allow you to carry a much bigger gun and keep that gun in place. So if you decide you want to work out, if you want to run on a treadmill, if you want to do a row machine, you just want to lift weights in general, and even just day-to-day -day stuff, these joggers are going to be your best bet as far as carrying a bigger size gun whenever you do it. Like for instance, you see me jumping all around, jumping all around, jumping all around, doing all that crap stuff. Now, look. Full size Takato. I wasn't a believer initially until I started rocking these things and they do a phenomenal job of keeping the guns in place. So if you wanna learn more, I'm gonna put a link in the description section of this video for Arrowhead Tactical and uh, you know, let them know I sent you. Typically ARs are what they call DI, direct impingement. That basically, think about it like a fart, right? So if you take a fart and then you fart and then you use the pressure from that fart to come down a tube, to come back and push your bolt back and recycle the gun. This is not gonna go well. That's kind of like a DI. You're just taking that fart and then blowing all the fart air into the gun. <laughs> That's a terrible analogy. That's horrible. I don't even wanna keep going with this analogy. <laughs> Let's just say gas, right? So the gas from the round, once you shoot it, it goes down the barrel, up the hole, down the tube and that pressure pushes back on the bolt that does all this fancy stuff that I'm not going to get into because you won't understand it anyway and cycles the gun whereas a piston system the gas goes down the barrel goes up the hole and there's a rod and it pushes the rod into the bolt and cycles the gun that's about as like overly basic as I can be in terms of describing the difference now what you get with that largely is you get a gun that runs cleaner because you don't have all that gas coming back into your gun. On top of that, that also allows the gun to be really favorable to being suppressed. Now, in this case, it has this muzzle brake on here, so I can't necessarily suppress it unless I take the muzzle brake off. I was gonna take it off, but I figured I wanted to do the video on the gun exactly the way it is. But by and large, suppressing a gun is usually better done when the gun is a piston system, like this one is. So. What ends up happening from there is typically, typically, when you have a piston system, the guns tend to be a little front heavy because you have all that, you have all that metal and rod up front. And so it adds a lot of weight to the gun and can throw off the balance a little bit. But the beautiful thing about this is it has the carbon fiber proof research band on it. So it makes it a lot lighter and therefore the balance of the gun is balanced. It's a balanced gun. Yeah. Now. You remember I was talking to you about? Remember I was talking to you about the brake? I think the brake is ugly. Don't like the way the brake looks. But my God, my goodness, it works. This gun runs so flat. It is insane how flat this gun runs. But that's because it has a big brake on it, which Peter hates. He doesn't like me right now because he has to deal with this brake. 
you see any concern in my, no, nothing, nothing. <laughs> so one thing is, so between the break, this carbon fiber proof research barrel, the short stroke piston system, it's a really balanced gun. Yes, if this was a direct impingement, it'd probably be even lighter, but nonetheless, me running this, Yeah, me running this, it's it's really relatively, if you notice, my even my stance. Like, I don't necessarily need to really get down in the most perfect stance possible, but when I do and I want to run this thing. Peter, can you pan over there to see where I was shooting? So 153. Like that, at this distance, I don't really have to put much effort in maintaining a perfect stance. Now, Fundamentally speaking, you still want to kind of do all those things. But nonetheless, this gun shoots incredibly light. It's incredibly balanced. But then on top of that, on top of that, oh, sweet joy. Like I said, this gun is the sum of its parts. This trigger. It's a trigger tech. Trigger tech diamond trigger. This, come here, come here. Let me show you. Come here. Just come here. Look at this. So it's a very, it's a trigger with a very thin profile. It's kind of your typical bow trigger but it has a very thin profile and it has serrations on the front of the trigger. But, but, whew, watch, just watch. So here we, got, we have our wall right there. We have a nice definable wall that I love. Boom, right there. And then, now, watch this reset. Jeez. Watch, watch. That is a very short reset. Now, the thing about this trigger, it's kind of cheating because it's adjustable. So you can adjust the poundage and the weight of the trigger to your desired weight limit. Um, right now, I'm pretty sure the way it was sent to me, they wanted to impress me. So they made it light. But it's not so light that it makes, that it's, a, that it's unnerving. Um, sometimes triggers can be so light, it's a little unnerving. This doesn't necessarily give me that. But then again, I'm pretty sure I can adjust this trigger and get it to do just that. Now, the way I'm having this gun, the way I'm running this gun is I have a Leopold Mark 3 HD 1 to 4, 1.5 to 4. Um, of course, you have these iron sights, which me and Peter look like complete buffoons initially because I couldn't figure out how to actually get them to close. And so we sat there for like three minutes looking like a bunch of dumb monkeys. And then I figured it out it's just right here. And even now on camera, I'm struggling. There you go. Boom. Now, they, they kind of, they look kind of like generic iron sights. They're, they're good. Um, nothing about them raves and screams, oh my God, these are just awesome. But they, I mean, they get the job done. Um, I do like the fact that they're kind of minimal in that you don't see the actual mechanism that, that allows it to close. But, and then of course this rail. I, I love this con, I love this kind of aesthetic combo of running m -lock on a side and then this kind of like triangular, I don't even know what this is called, but I like it a lot in terms of visually, it works with my eyes visually. I think it's a good looking rail. It's a rather simple rail. Of course, you got your rails up top. Um, but <sighs> let's get to something that I'm not too fond of. This. I don't like it. I don't. Now, functionally, like running a gun, like it doesn't, cause me any issues. It, it actually, cheek, the cheek weld is really good. Um, it on my shoulder, it feels very planted. It feels a lot of confidence. Like it functionally works, except this. Like you gotta kind of pull down to adjust. That took me a second to figure out too. I couldn't figure out, like I was doing all types of weird stuff. I was like doing this and doing that. And, but really, if I'm gonna be honest, the thing I don't like about it See, I did it again. I just think the stock's not attractive. Now, guess who thinks the stock actually looks really good? Yeah, Peter. Peter was like, oh, I really like the way that stock looks. It's different. It just, it seems so different. Peter's easy to please. And that is true. Me, not so much. I, I think it kind of looks cheap. I do, I think it kind of takes away from 
all of the other premium quality aspects of this gun. You know, you take into account this great brake, even though I don't like it aesthetically, um, this rail system that looks really nice. Then you have the carbon fiber proof research barrel. Um, and then of course you got the ambi selector switch. You got these iron sights. Um, you have this radiant charging handle and hell, you even have this doohickey here on the right hand side. I don't even know what it's called necessarily, but what it allows you to do is it allows you to drop. It's like a modified bad lever. So instead of having it here in the trigger guard, it's right here on the side, and then I can just push it and drop the bolt. And it's a little wonky to use, maybe because I'm just not naturally inclined to it, but, and then of course the ergo grips. The weird thing about the ergo grips is, I think ergo grips look a little cheapish from an ergonomic standpoint. They're actually really great. Like when I actually do run them, they feel really good in hand. Um, I probably still might change it out. Just from an aesthetic standpoint, I'm not the biggest fan of them, but they feel great and they work. But I just feel like this stock takes away from the overall aesthetics of this gun. I just don't think it fits. I don't. Um, so that's going to be the first to go. Gone. Um, I might leave the ergo grip on here because I do love the way it feels in hand. I'm, I get a little wonky about it whenever my hands start sweating. So I'm not necessarily sure it's going to stay. But by and large, everything else, like I said, some of its parts, it's like they really set out to put together all the things that would make this rifle enjoyable to shoot and use. So like I said before, like when I'm here, the gun, the gun is incredibly balanced. The trigger is just, uh. now, one thing I will say about the trigger, going back to that, the trigger, it's, and I think it has a lot more to do with the short stroke piston system more than anything. And I noticed this in most piston guns. So I can run DI guns really, really fast. And this trigger, I can run really, really fast. But it, for the first time, I feel like the gun can't necessarily keep up with how fast I can pull the trigger. And I know, technically, from a science standpoint, that's virtually impossible. However, I do feel that way. So when I'm running a gun fast, like, like I feel like I can start to outrun the trigger, like the piston can't run fast enough. But like I said, Realistically, that makes no sense, but perceptively, that's kind of how it feels in my hands. Um, other guns, like DI guns, when I run them, I feel like I can't, no matter how fast my trigger goes, a gun can still outrun me. Now, that's not to say it's gun slow, because it's not. The gun runs, but it kind of strokes my ego a little bit. It's like, ooh, I can shoot so fast that I can almost feel the, the upper limits and edge of how fast this gun can run. But. I and mean, then even when we were sighting and getting this gun zeroed in, I mean, from an accuracy standpoint, it was stacking them. It was stacking them. And for the very first time ever, I put an optic on a gun and it was actually pretty much zeroed. That's when you start zeroing a bunch of guns, you'll start realizing how rare that is. But nonetheless, but Let's go to the little guy. Come on, little guy. Nothing. Damn. But, so, there you have, oh, also almost forgot to mention the bolt. Uh, this bolt is like this weird, basically it's like a really lightweight bolt, um, which I think a lot of it was done to mitigate how heavy piston guns typically kind of have to be. Um, but. By and large, this gun has a very good feel to it. Um, like I said, some of its parts, you got this awesome trigger, uh, which can seem a little fragile sometimes. Sometimes the trigger can feel a little fragile because it is so thin, but it's also kind of endearing. Like it's almost kind of comforting at the same time because it's just so light. And so it gives you the perception that this thing is fast and has a light trigger pull. But between that, this beautiful carbon fiber barrel, the balance, this brake on this thing, I mean, it ain't cheap. So like I said, it's like 23 to 2,500 street prices. Um, this, Peter loves it. So for all you Peter fans out there, Peter likes this. He loves this. He's a fan. Me, not so much. But there you have it, the Adam's Arms P3. I'll take it. Shut up, Peter. You will take it. Oh, 
I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Guns aren't political. That's why I need your help getting this message to spread on YouTube by clicking the thumbs up button, leaving a comment to let me know what you think of the video, then subscribing to the channel. But most importantly, click that bell symbol. For products featured in this video, click the links in the description.